So most everybody knows that in the early days of sailing ships, masts were used to hold the rigging and the sails of the ship in order to propel it through the water. But what a lot of people still wonder is, how come older ocean liners such as Lusitania, Mauritania, Oceanic, Titanic, why did they have these big, tall masts? We don't see those on cruise ships today. We don't even see them on the QE2 or the Queen Mary 2. So what were the masts used for? Well, quite simply, in the early days of steam power on ocean liners, they still had a lot of masts. When you look at the original Oceanic, for instance, she had several masts, and this was so in case if there was something wrong with the steam engine, they could actually pull out large sails and actually sail the ship themselves. But as you probably know, as time went on, less masts showed up on the ship. I remember a little while ago on my channel, there was somebody who commented on one of my videos that Titanic could have sailed with her masts. And I thought, well, that's, that's not possible because there were only two large masts on Titanic and there was no rigging to make the ship sail. But this person was so adamant that Titanic could sail using her masts. But the thing is, is let me explain why that wasn't possible. First of all, if you wanted to get a ship the size of Titanic to sail using rigging and using you know, canvas sails, you would have to have at, at least 10 very, very large masts, and each of them would have to be able to hold several different sails. And even then, you wouldn't get enough uh, propulsion from the air. You wouldn't get enough movement from the air to actually sail the ship, because the ship is just so large and so heavy. It's just not possible. And with two masts, just forget about it. it. It just couldn't work at all. It wouldn't be possible. So why did Titanic have masts? Why did other ocean liners have masts like that? Well, it's actually quite simple. Masts were used for several different purposes. So one of the purposes is actually hoisting signal flags. Signal flags were used to communicate to other passing ships nearby. But also another purpose take Titanic for instance, was that Titanic had a wireless telegram system. It could actually communicate to the mainland. And one of the ways it did that was through these antenna wires that were strung between the two masts. Now, a lot of people have actually wondered what these wires were for. There was one viewer who actually thought that the wires were used to keep the two halves of the ship together. <laughs> but actually, they are antenna wires. And there were four of them that were strung across. And so the Marconi wireless room would actually connect its cables up to here, and then those antenna wires would uh, signal to the nearest mainland and carry that message across or bring new messages in. So that was another purpose for masts, was that they flew those antenna wires as high as possible to get the best reach across the ocean. Another purpose for these masts is that the forward mast quite often had a crow's nest on it. Crow's nests were still useful even in the early days of ocean liners or the 1900s, for instance, because not only would it help the lookouts to see what was happening ahead of the ship, but also the lookouts could monitor the ship beneath them so they could look around and see if everything was going okay. Another reason for the masts is that quite often they were hooked up to boom cranes. Now, if you've never heard of a boom crane, it's actually quite simple. It's just a steel arm that is hooked up to the mast and using a series of pulleys and winches and ropes they could actually maneuver the crane arm around and they could haul cargo onto the ship. Now Titanic for instance used these electric cranes but I do believe it had at least one boom crane in case of emergencies. But when you look at the Queen Mary for instance she had on her forward mast seven boom cranes that could be operated from the electric winches that were sitting on the deck. So these ships actually used the forward and sometimes the main mast for the boom cranes. With the advent of radar and of better wireless communication technology, there became less and less of a need for ships to have these big, tall masts. Instead, they opted for putting just one mast on a ship 
and the mast would have all the communication uh, equipment attached to it, including radar as well. So when you look at the mast on ships like QE2 or Queen Mary 2, you'll notice that they have this short stubby mast towards the front of the ship. And it serves all kinds of duties that are necessary today. It has the radar equipment, it has the communication equipment, it has sometimes the horns or the fog horns of the ship, and it also has rigging for flying signal flags if necessary. So that's pretty much what happened to masts on ships. It went from needing them for hoisting sails to simply just using them for stringing across antennas for communication systems and boom cranes as well. And then it just went down to having a simple mast that holds some communication equipment. And really that's the evolution of the mast on ships. That's why they don't really need them anymore. Anyway, folks, I hope that answered a few questions you might have. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, if you enjoy my content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or my YouTube membership. This way you can get exclusive perks in return. Now in the future, I plan to take a trip to the UK aboard the Queen Mary 2 and film a lot of historic locations there so I can bring you all some new content. So if you'd like to see that happen as soon as possible, then you can support my trip by going to my GoFundMe page and donating to that. All the links that you need are in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.